Uh, Shaina Lowe, who's in occupied East Jerusalem, she's the communication advisor at the Norwegian Refugee Council. Um, appreciate your time, Shaina. We've got attacks happening on UN organisations. Does that mean the, that Israel has just no respect for the UN? It's not just that Israel has no respect for the UN. It's a sign that Israel doesn't respect international law. Under international law, UN facilities are, are inviolable. They're never to be targeted under any circumstances, even if the Israeli allegations are around uh, Palestinian armed groups using uh, those facilities. They are, these are facilities that are meant to be protected. But then you have to think about the human impact on this. We have 2.1 million people remaining in Gaza, nearly 39,000 people killed, 90% uh, of the population displaced many people multiple times. And for those displaced people, they are searching for any square inch that they and their families can seek relative safety. And those that are lucky are the ones that end up at these UN facilities, at, at, at in facilities. Many people are forced to sleep on the streets. So imagine going to a place, finding shelter, finding a place with a roof over your head where you and your family think that you'll be safe only to be bombed there. And these are areas, of course, that Israel has told people to flee to repeatedly. They continue to issue unlawful uh, evacuation orders amounting to forcible transfer, again, a violation of international humanitarian law. And, 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 and yet people have no safe space. There's no safe space, despite what the Israelis say around humanitarian zones. There's simply no safe place for Palestinians to seek shelter and seek some type of reprieve from the killing and destruction that has surrounded them for the last nine plus months. China, we're getting close to 40,000 people killed in Gaza. Um, there's no escaping it. The vast majority of them will have nothing to do with Hamas. Hamas just doesn't have that many members, that many combatants. And we, we know by UN estimates that around half of them may have been women and children who were killed. So it brings up this concept of collateral damage, and this is what Israel says. It says, as in an attack that our correspondent just described today, where a car was targeted, presumably with militants inside, but people nearby in tent camps died. This concept of collateral damage. Critics will say that this is just murder of innocent people being dressed up as something else. Is there any limit to this concept of, of people being killed and just labelled as collateral damage? Well, you know, every country when they're engaging in war is is uh, meant to calculate, uh, abide by the principles of international law, and that includes the principle of proportionality, which means that uh, states must weigh the the benefit, the military benefit, and then, of course, the, what what Israel would call the collateral damage or the civilian harm. And one of the challenges is that we simply do not know what Israel's calculation is in terms of how they're calculating this. But of course given the immense number of people killed, women and children, the elderly, people, men who have who are not fighters, uh, along with the tremendous destruction of Gaza's infrastructure, homes, uh, farmland, uh, this there's, there's no way that this could, any of this destruction or death be considered proportionate uh, under, under these circumstances with what we've, we've been witnessing. Shana, I appreciate your time. Shana Lowe, my guest, communication advisor at the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you.